everybody. I just got a weird notice saying I didn't have enough Wi-Fi. So if someone hops on there, let me know that this is working okay. Um, I'm just going to go forward with it. So it's Monday, and today's tutorial, Makeup Monday, is all about lashes and brows. Two things I'm really, really super passionate about. Um, I just think that your eyebrows are the, the window pane to your soul. They frame your eyes. They're so important, and it's a really ignored and overlooked um, step for a lot of people. And then, of course, I'm just an eyelash junkie. I always have been. So today, we're going to specifically just talk about those two things. And I just took a shot, uh, just washed my face and got all my mascara off and took my brows off. Um, I know I have black brows and black lashes, so it doesn't look like I removed it, but I really, really, really did. So, first things first, we are going to start with our eyebrows. Um, gosh, I sure hope somebody jumps on there soon and let me know. I know y'all aren't used to me being on time, and I'm actually five minutes early. I said three-ish, and so um, I'm usually late, not early. So this is a, a, a surprise for me. So first things first, when I start with my eyebrows with all of my clients, the very first thing that I will do is brush up their brows. Um, and I pull my hair out of the way so you can see this good. So this is my brows just brushed down and straight. And then this is when they're brushed up. I mean, that is like an eye lift. It lifts my eyes and makes that whole side of my face look a lot more lifted. So just brushing your brows up makes the biggest difference ever. Um, so once your brows are brushed up, the second thing I do and you may not want to do this to yourself. You may want to have a professional do it. I do this to all of my clients. But I brush them up, and I try to wax as little as I can. Um, I don't want to take out, you know, I wish over the years I had not even gotten them as thin as I did. Because, you know, full brows are a sign of youth. They make us look younger. Um, and when I have young people coming in want me to do their eyebrows, and they want me to take off half their brows, um... You know, I refuse to do it. Um, they have to go somewhere else because, you know, you get my age and they don't come back. They start sprouting out your chin or somewhere else. So, um, so I won't take out their brows. You need to keep them, keep them thick and full. But what I will do, I will brush them up super straight, super tall. And if I have a crazy long eyebrow, you know, I will go in and just barely nip the ends because I do like my brows long and full. So I'll go in and do this side. I haven't trimmed them in quite a while. And there's only a few. Uh, my niece tried to do this to herself one time because she's always seen me do it to her. And she cut a big hunk because she went down into them instead of just on the top. So if you're not comfortable doing that, when you get your eyebrows done, um, hey, Orly, guys, I was wondering if this was working. Um, so when you have your eyebrows done, ask your, your eyebrow person to to trim the really long pieces that are sticking up on the top. So that's the first thing for eyebrows. That involves no color, um, hey Kelly, um, no color or anything. Okay, um, and then of course getting them waxed. Um, you know, I don't have a lot of growth these days because like I said, it's busy coming out my chin and my nose and other crazy places. But I have so much blonde peach fuzz that I love to wax all this just because I get a better application for my shadow. So when you go get waxed, you know, ask the person doing it if they'll make sure they clean up all the blonde fuzzies all around it. And some people will tell you not to wax up here, but I've got clients that have a lot of hair up in here. And so why leave it? If it's not where it's supposed to be, get rid of it. It's just hair. It's not a nose job. You know, just wax it off. Um, okay, so what? where do your eyebrows start and where do they end. So if you laid a pencil on the side of your nose and went straight up, that is where your brows should start. Now where should they end? So in a perfect world, you lay this on the corner of your nose to the corner of your eye and that should be where your brows end. And then at that angle right there is like the highest part of your arch. So right in there you know, on the outside of your iris would be where you want your brow to go up. It's always funny because people will ask me, my friend Kyle, um, she's always like, make me an arch. And 
You know, if you're if you're really a professional makeup artist, you can recreate someone's eyebrows, but what we're here to do today is eyebrows and lashes for real women, not people that are going to paint on these crazy brows and do all this stuff on a regular basis. So someone can create you some brows where you don't have any, but um, for what we're doing today, we're going to work with what you got. So it's simple and it's something that you'll duplicate on a daily basis. So the easiest product for most people are going to be eyebrow pencils. Um, there are all kinds of pencils on the market. The Alouette pencil, they only have it in one color, but I've been surprised, um, like as dark as my eyes are, and then as light as some of my blonde clients, it's, a, it's an odd color called soft taupe, I believe. Natural taupe, it's called natural taupe. But it like works on like everybody. Can y'all see that? It's, let's see, I'll put it back here. I don't know if y'all can see that very good, but it's a it's an odd color. It looks good on gray. It looks good on blonde. So, I, like I said, I've seemed to make it match on everybody. I love that there's a spoolie on the end. I'm a huge spoolie girl, and I'm always looking for my spoolies, always. Um, so I'm having to go around like, where's my eyebrow spoolie? Um, because I'm always brushing my brows up, and I can never find this one. Well, this one's always attached, so that's nice to know. So starting with a pencil. You always want to mimic the the short strokes of your hair. So I've got good brows, but you can see how in there it's lighter than it used to be. It's thinning in there, and then I'm getting thin out here. And so what I will generally do is just go in with this pencil and mimic the hairs in my brows. And I mean, look at that already. Oh, that one's complete, and then out here, you know, I'll go from the top where I want to make my arch a little stronger and just bring it down. And then I'll come through and just brush it through to make sure it's smeared all the way in and it kind of gets down to that skin level. So look, that eyebrow is, is a lot stronger and I like a strong eyebrow. Some people might not, um, but I, like I said, I already have dark brows. So all I did was fill in there, make my arch a little stronger, and then finish off my tail on the end. Somebody else that has lighter eyebrows would, of course, want to go all the way through it. And you just, you don't want to draw. You want to mimic the shape of a hair. You know, you want to just, and the way these hairs grow down, that's the way you want to do your stroke. This one you want to go up, this one kind of goes that way, and that one goes down. So if you mimic that, you're going to get... A really good look. Powders are simple, they're easy, I mean liners are the easiest thing I find for people to use. Of course then you have brow powders. I love this little kit because it really really works on gray, redhead, blondes, and brunettes. So it comes with a wax. You can do the wax before or you can do it after. Um, I've never done it before until I saw Orly do it this way and I really like it. All the wax is going to do is give some grip so your powder can stick on it. I'm not a good person to do this for y'all because I do have dark brows, so I wish I had somebody blonde and light here. But I'm going to go into like the brunette, and you'll see where I'm just going to... To me, the powders can get a lot more dramatic, and then they can also recreate the shape a lot more naturally than a pencil does. I'm going to come in in the top. And the powder really clings to the hair that you have there, so it looks a lot more natural. So see, I extended my tail, and so that really, really makes my brows strong. Um, you know, you can carve them out, you can take the pencil and really go down here and, or your powder, and really give it a strong shape. You know, I watched a lot of tutorials yesterday on this. Hey, Lynn. Hey, Lily. May. Um, and I watched a lot of tutorials on this, and these girls are just carving out this super strong, bold brow. And I know in reality, most of us are not going to do that. And so, you know, you're just going to take the powder and fill in what you got. I know Lynn Burnett was at a party I did a few weeks ago, and she's got beautiful reddish auburn hair. And this was a perfect match for her, wasn't it, Lynn? You guys comment. Make some Make some noise out there. Let me know that you're watching and you're, you're getting what I'm saying. Um, and so it matches so many different types of hair color. So that's your powders. 
Um, and really to get a great brow when you use multiple colors, because like hair color is not one color. We've got all kinds of um, light and darker brows just pressed for more intense. Yeah, so Orly's saying the pencil that I showed y'all earlier, a lighter hand will work for blonder hair, and then a heavier hand will work for the darker brows like I have and like Orly has. She probably didn't pencil hers because she's got lots of eyebrows. Um, so that is your powders. But I find that if you use multiple colors, use a little bit of the auburn, use a little bit of the blonde. It, it mimics natural hair. Hey, Dottie. It mimics the natural hair a lot more, more naturally than um, just one color would do. So, like, I like going a little lighter than my brows just because I've got so many colors in my hair. Um, and then you also can buy brow gels. This is some little cheapy gel that I picked up. I'm not sure where. Um, a gel just kind of holds your brow in place, but these can really deposit a lot of color. So this is like a light brown or something, and it can get really, really dark and heavy on me. But because I do have a lot of brows, sometimes I like to use a gel or something to keep, to make sure they stay up and don't go sideways or, or fall flat throughout the day. Um, you can also just take a little spoolie and you know, spray a little hairspray on it and then run the spoolie through your brows. And um, I know it looked like a facelift on Lynn when we did that. It just popped her whole, her whole eye, just looked amazing. So you can just also put a little hairspray on your spoolie and use it as a setter too. There's all kind of brow gels. Cheap ones work great. So if you need something to help brush them up and keep them in place, the, um, just some little cheap brow gel or hairspray on a spoolie will do the trick. So whichever you prefer. So let's see, um, so something that I have done recently, um, I was getting my hair done not too long ago and, and my niece has been darkening my roots. We've been trying to go darker, so doing more of an ombre with dark roots and lighter on the, blonde, on the bottom. And she had some color left over, so I asked her just to run it through my brows because I used to have jet black eyebrows. Blonde hair when I was little, huge black eyebrows. Well, they've just gotten a lot lighter as I've gotten older, and I like my strong brows. It's just what I'm used to. It's who I am. So I had to run some color through them. So I loved it, um, but when they wore off real quick, you know, I don't go get my hair done as, as often as this was fading. I saw on Pinterest where these girls were going and picking up the just for men color because you get such a small amount instead of a huge box of color. And literally, and they specifically said the one for mustaches and beards, um, mainly because it covers gray really well. And so for a lot of us getting lighter, as my niece so kindly told me, I was getting sparkles in my hair. And that's what was making my roots look so light and so blonde. Because I'm like, I don't have any gray. She says, well, you have a few sparkles up there. So I think that's what was um, lightening my brows too. So I didn't go buy the one that's just for mustaches and beers because my husband had some here at the house. Don't tell him I told you that, but we have some just for men here. And so I just mixed it up and one of the tiny little mascara spoolies is perfect. Run it in the color, run it through your brows, and it is the perfect brow tint. You can buy brow tinting um, colors um, and you can go pay someone. I know a friend of mine, um, Lisa Herman did a, a video a while back on getting her brows tinted because she has really beautiful dark hair but super light brows and so she got hers tinted and um, when she did that it just made all the difference in the world well you can do the same thing I'm not a cosmetologist so if you don't feel comfortable doing that then ask your hairdresser to do it because they also t I think Lisa might have had her lashes tinted too and they use color on the lashes but on my brows, I didn't feel intimidated or uncomfortable at all. I just loaded this little thing with some color, and the small one works perfect because I can really get it just in my hair. Whereas my niece was super busy that day, and she was trying to use the little paintbrush because she didn't have these to get it on my brows. So we got it on there, but we also had some on my skin. Got it off okay, but I'm just saying I really can control this. So I'm telling you, if you've got light brows, go get you some Just For Men hair color and a little bag of spoolies and darken your brows up with a little color. It lasts a month, three or four weeks, works great. 
super easy, super cheap. Um, so that's, you know, don't do it on your lashes if you're worried about getting it into your eyes and that sort of thing. You definitely pay a professional for that. But for your brows, I think it's all good. Um, and let's see. Oh, I saw the craziest thing this weekend. <sighs> Very time consuming. These girls were spending an hour per brow. But for some of you that have no eyebrows, I'll post one of the YouTube videos in this. Um, when I finish today, I'll, I'll go back and edit this and put the link. Oh my God. So they took some false eyelashes and let's see, can you see that? And literally cut the lashes off the little thing and put them all down in a little container, put a little drop of glue and then went back and literally picked up a hair at a time. And this one girl had gotten some professional glue. Her, she said her stayed on four to six weeks. So she had like no tail whatsoever. Like her eyebrows stopped there, a random two or three hairs, and then she just set them in there and it stuck either to her skin or to other hairs. It was amazing. Her eyebrows were huge, perfect, giant, but it was two hours. So I get that most of us aren't gonna do that, but if you've got a special event or if you spend a lot of time on your brows and you just don't wanna fool with that, then take a Saturday and spend two hours and you have to get the lashes that are tapered. Watch the video and it'll give you all the details if you're interested in going that route. So that's a whole nother thing. And then I've been blown away lately at the microblading. I've had a lot of clients do it. I'll post some pictures um, that I found on Pinterest. It's amazing. People with no eyebrows or they're so blonde, the microblading is a tiny little slit in the skin that mimics a hair and they fill it with dye. So it's not a long-term tattoo because it doesn't go as deep as a regular tattoo, but um, it looks just like hair strokes, unbelievable, perfect. So for those of you that um, just get tired of waking up and you have no eyebrows, you get tired of fooling with them, it's about 500 bucks and I think that includes a touch-up. There are several spas, I know here in Augusta, Rosewater Spa does it and um, I've heard of a few other places. So just, you know, check, see where you live. Definitely get some before and afters and some references. But if I had no eyebrows at all, I would definitely do that because it, it's, it's night and day. These girls just, they look awake. They look like they've had a facelift just because they have eyebrows 24 seven. So that's just something else to um, check into too. So you can get stencils if you don't have a nice eyebrow shape. I know with Beauty Control, we had a little stencil kit and then I've seen them at Sally's. So you just put the stencil there, pick up the powder, and then just go back and forth in the stencil. And when you remove it, you have this. You know, but some people just could not manage that. So all we were talking about today is just doing your brows. I know I had someone here this weekend who just never does her brows. And she had a ton of them, but they were just really, really light. And so... um. When we darkened her brows, oh my gosh, it made all the difference in the world. Beautiful redhead, gorgeous red hair. Her name's Amy, and we used um, some of the, the auburn color that's in this. And she just doesn't take the time to do it, but wow, what a difference it made. So, so work on your brows, whether it's a pencil or a powder. You know, it's not rocket science. I get that, you know, you may not feel comfortable recreating an entire eyebrow, so you don't have to do that. Just work with what you got and just enhance it a little bit. Um, and when you finish, you know, a good thing to do too is always a little highlighter right above your brow, and you can even go below it. You can use it as like a, a lid primer, but this is just the concealer. I love the shades in here, but you can see how just that little highlight right there kind of gives you a little illusion of a little lift right above your brows. And this is that all-in-one um, makeup brush. I love this brush. I use it for concealer. I use it all over the place. So like that one, I got really heavy, but you know, you're just gonna rub it into the skin and it's gonna give you like a, a highlight over your brows and look like a little lift up there. Okay, so moving on to eyelashes. A couple of tools you're gonna wanna have in your makeup bag or one, a plastic spoon. I use this all the time on people. Um, just this morning I had someone here and um, she used this because she has 
you know, really nice curled lashes and they kept touching her up here and she was getting gunk up there. So the spoon is just to go there where you can literally push your lashes up against that. And then when you move it, all the mess is on the spoon instead of here. And then you can also go underneath and get super, super messy. And when you move it, you can also use a business card, whatever you've got that's shaped like that. But I think the spoons work great because of the long handle. So my hand's not up here in the way of my mascara. So I can just set the spoon there and go back and forth and really, really, really build my lashes and not worry about a big mess up there. I'm pretty good with mine now because I've been doing it so long, but um, a lot of other people, that spoon makes a big difference for them. Um, clean spoolies. You know, I've showed you before these spoolies from Sally's. I love these nylon br um, brushes. Whenever you get too much gunky mascara, you need to spread them apart. You know, rather than sticking tweezers by your eyeball or scissors to try to spread them or safety pins, you know, you've got these little nylon things that can go in and grab and just separate and make them, um, you know, make them just perfect. You can clean up all your messes with that. So I love these little nylon ones. They're great for, for cleaning up and spreading out your lashes. Um, let's see. I love the Alouette Disposable Mascara Wand. We can order this under the supply section online. So I love that not only does it have a spoolie, so you can apply your client's mascara, you can use it to clean your lashes up. And actually, I like this one as much as I like these, except for I love that little one with the little ball. But what I'm obsessed with is that the other side of this has got a lip brush. And so you can use this to make like a gel eyeliner out of. Um, or you can use this for, for those of you that are so blonde and like these itty bitty baby lashes, get a little mascara on it and you can literally use the brush on the other side to sort of paint your lashes. So if you really struggle with getting mascara on your bottom lashes, you know, a, an angled brush, a small brush, but this is perfect because you've got mascara and, um, a lip brush on the other side. So you can use that for all around your eyes. So I really, really like that little little tool um, and after you put your mascara on if you're the kind of person that you just get smudges all up there and I will tell you that is something I've struggled with for like the last four or five years and most of you know that if you use like the dramatic lash I love the volulicious but you always had smudge throughout the day or you also um, would get like some smearing so a way to, to prevent that, that is not happening to me at all with the new Alouette mascara that I'm using. But if that's just a problem for you, if you have allergies, if you just tear and cry all the time, then um, put your mascara on and put a coat of waterproof over it. Or do regular on top and just do waterproof on the bottom. So if no matter what you've done, no matter what you've tried, powder, if your mascara runs throughout the day, a lot of times I find when my client's mascara wicks and travels down their face, most of the time it's how they remove their makeup at night. They're using just an oily whatever, baby oil, and then they don't wash that off. Then they go to bed, then they get up the next morning and just apply their makeup without really, really washing. Or they put their night creams and their eye creams on and we get really lazy and we get product on our lashes. And then the next day there's this you know, goo on your lash that you don't see, but you put your mascara on it, and then it just wants to run down your face. So make sure that you're getting the residue off of your lashes at night. Um, okay, so, um, and then if you get a mascara tube that feels old, gosh, I washed all my makeup off. I feel so splotchy. Um, if you get a mascara that feels old, dried up, like you're not getting any product out of it, then First of all, you know, you do want to get the product up off the side, but a little drop of Visine down in an old mascara will totally bring it back to life. And you'll get, you know, another few weeks out of your product. Um, and then also just get you a cup of really, really hot water and put your tube in it. And it breaks down and looses the mascara off the sides of the wall. That way it's like getting a whole brand new, because there's so much product in there that just needs to come down and get onto your wand. But it's all against the sides from us, you know, rotating it around all, all the time. Okay, so before I put my mascara on, the first thing I like to do is 
powder my eyelashes. You can buy primers for this. A lot of companies sell separate primers. Anything you do to add bulk to your lashes, then your mascara has more territory to cover. Um, there's all kind of YouTube videos with people using cornstarch, baby powder. Well, I always just take a little of my powder, whatever I'm using, translucent powder, my foundation. Can you see the powder that I'm putting on my lashes? So I always just put powder on the lashes before I ever put my mascara on. All right, now I am a big believer in what we did the other day, the tight lining. So I do go in and just whip on a little tight line. This isn't mascara, but it makes me all of a sudden look like my lashes are super thick and super lush. So a little quick tight line, and it takes a little practice to, to get that done. But I always like to do that before my, I put on my mascara, because once I do that, then I, it's hard to hold my lashes. Um, so you date your eye products, Lynn, the start date. Yes, mascara should be thrown away three to four months max. And I know some of us have kept those things, especially my waterproofs from last summer. I keep those things forever. But three or four months, you should toss them. You shouldn't keep them forever. That's bad. So you want to get rid of them and start over. Okay, so we have two options to choose from. And many of you have some... Sorry, I thought... I'm sorry, I thought I blocked my calls and I, I don't know how that one came through. So, um, you know, it's not really the mascara. It is... Goodness, I don't know what happened to the light all of a sudden. Um, anyway... Okay, so the mascara, it's just the applicator. It's not the product, it's not the mascara, but it is the applicator. So Alouette has a curling mascara and they have a stretch lengthening mascara. So you have one for, for length and one for curl. And in a perfect world, I've always told y'all, any video I've ever done, you want one mascara for curling or pushing up, and then a lot of people will lengthen with another type of mascara. I know a lot of you aren't going to do two mascaras. That's fine. Orly and Martha prefer the Intensity Stretch. And you guys, that one's half price this month with any $40 order. And you know the purchase with purchase. For every $40 you order, you can add on um, the four purchase with purchase items. One of them, four of them, whatever, depending on how much your order is. I like the curling one. So what I like about this is the shape of the wand. It's kind of round. And so I'm going to go in, and y'all have seen me do this a million times. I literally close my eye on the mascara wand. I just sit there with it closed. And I never have to use an eyelash curler because I curl my own lashes this way. It takes practice, but I want to show y'all just like one coat of that, the difference that makes. That's one coat. Um, so I will put... A little light second coat and then you're going to want to let it set up and dry okay so now let's go in and do the other side I've gotten to where I mean I don't even open my eye it just kind of gets open just enough for me to put the wand inside and it's just something you've got to practice it's uncomfortable and weird at first um, but you will get used to it I promise and then just a little on the bottom and like I said, if you've got teeny, teeny, tiny lashes, just use a little lip applicator to really get to the bottom one. But I've got a lot of lashes on the bottom, so that's not an issue for me. I always try to get the sides of my lashes pulled out. Um, I'm a mascara junkie, y'all, so I will put, you know, several coats of mascara on. I know a lot of you don't, and that's fine. Um, but look at the difference. You know, all of a sudden I look like I have all my makeup on. It just... To me, mascara is the one thing I will not go without. So can y'all see the difference? Now, if I want to really stretch my lashes, I'll let that set up, let that dry just a minute. We'll come back in a minute and I'll put a coat of the stretch mascara. And then that's going to make them go up to like my eyebrows. Um, and the difference is, see, that applicator is a fat wand. This one is not as fat as the Volulicious that we had. So for those of you with small eyes, you're going to like that you can get this in your eye better than the big fat Volulicious one. But it's that same concept. It's always the applicator that makes the difference on your lashes. I just love that this, this truly curls my lashes. It's fortified with, I think, argan oil and something. It's really good for your lashes. But this curls them up and my lashes don't go flat. 
I used to have a problem with feeling like my lashes go flat during the day and I'd need a fresh coat to lift them up, but this keeps them up really all day long. Um, okay, if you get a mascara boo-boo, like you get a big blob down here, or down there, if you can let it dry, it's so much better. Let it dry and then come back and just like twirl it and it'll pick it up. If you mess with it right away while it's wet, you're just gonna smudge it, make a big old mess. So just go in, swirl it, and then remove it. Um, the powder makes all the difference in the world. That's why my lashes really, really jump up. So I'm gonna go back with a coat of the Stretch, Intensity Stretch, and I don't have on any eyeshadow so y'all can really, really see my lashes. This is a super, super black mascara. So can you see? I mean, it just really, look at the difference. For those of you that only want to use one mascara, I can see why you would like the stretch the best because it, it's, it's blacker. It really gives you more length. Um, but I happen to really, really like curling mascaras. But the secret to getting your lashes curled too is learning to close and you wiggle back and forth because I'm getting product at my roots instead of just on the ends. Look at that. Isn't that crazy? And so, I mean, y'all can see the length and the drama that I get from that mascara. I'm so happy that I love this mascara because in 25 years, I only liked really one mascara that we ever had. I have good lashes, so I can make just about any of them work, but um, I love both of these mascaras. So very excited that I like them. I was really worried about that. Um, a few other tips is Latisse. A lot of people have been asking me about Latisse. Um, my first experience with Latisse was a few years ago. I had glue-on eyelash extensions. Um, so you've got fake lashes that you can put on and then there are the, the glue-on kind that are for long wear. I let someone put those on me. You know, she wanted to try it and I'm, I'm game, you know. And so we did it. Well, I didn't like them. It clumped my lashes together because I have a lot of lashes. I think those are great for people that have skimpy lashes. So, of course, I picked at them. I pulled at them. I messed my lashes up. So I bought some Latisse and was shocked in a month how much my lashes grew back. And so since that day, I will get Latisse. And I can't use it but about two weeks at a time. Any, any, any longer than that. And my eyelashes are obnoxious. Um... But Latisse is about 140 bucks a bottle. My eye doctor writes me a, a prescription for whatever the real name of Latisse is. Not the Latisse is the the cosmetic name of it. So the brand name is Vitamin Props or something like that. So my eye doctor, he knows he knows where I'm getting it from. He encouraged it. I get my Restasis from Canada because my insurance won't cover it, and it's 500 bucks a month. And I get these eye these. Um, the, the fake Latisse. Actually, this is the real Latisse. Latisse is just this stuff with the, the brand Latisse stamped on it. So it will come, because I think it's for glaucoma, so it will come like this. You put it on like a little lip brush applicator. When you buy the real Latisse, they give you a bazillion of these. If you buy this, it only comes like this because they assume you're using it for glaucoma. And so you can just pick up little lip brushes from Sally's. You put it on, you put it on your lash line, and I also... Put this in my brows. I will do this for about two weeks, and then I stop, and then about three months later, I'll do it again for about two weeks. Because what I've discovered as I've gotten older, I still have great lashes, but they're thinner, they're more sparse, they're not as black as they used to be, my brows are fading, and this does the trick to keep them super lush and super black. Um, you know, and for people that don't have lashes, it is a miracle. There are a lot of products on the market that I know other companies sell that are lash enhancers. Um, I haven't used any of them, so I really can't give you an honest opinion. If you have, you can put in there what you like. But this, I end up getting three bottles of this for like 65 or $70, and it lasts me a year. So if you want more information on that, you know, you can try that. And then when it comes to false lashes... That's a whole nother thing. You've got individuals. I love the um, trios. That's like a cluster of three stuck together. And then you can also get the strips. Now, for those of you that want strip lashes, if you're doing something special, I highly recommend, and we're not doing fake eyelashes today, but 
I highly recommend the Ardell Babies. Um, can you see they are so natural? Like, you can't tell when I put these on people, but they just have gorgeous lashes. And then if you want a little more drama, the Demi Wispies. Can y'all see those? The Demi Wispies are a little bit more drama. Um, the individuals look beautiful. You can really, you know, customize that a lot more. And I just used this glue for the first time at the last wedding that I did. And I love it. It's the Duo. Um, it's Duo. I just got it at Sally's. But I love that it's, you know, it's got its own paintbrush. So you paint the band, let it set up for 30, 40 seconds. You want to roll it so it gets that straight shape gone and it's more like your eye. But then I also love this because I'll put a drop of glue right on the lash line. Because strip lashes tend to always want to pull up here and pull up in there. And um, I put that little glue and it was the easiest, best eyelash application I ever had at a wedding. I was fast. I was in and out in no time. So that was exciting. Um, we can do another thing later on down the road about false eyelashes if anybody wants to know all that. Um, and you can also go to a salon and have them glue on the extensions. But if you, if you learn to get your mascara on right and then you, you know, throw in a little Latisse, if you've got very skimpy lashes, you will have monster eyelashes. Um, you'll love them. Some people, no matter what, they're just, you know, they need a little more. So if you want to try the glue-ons or the false lashes, you know, by all means, go for it. And then, of course, you know, taking it off at night. Um, something that I've noticed people doing lately when they come over for their facial is they want to wash their face with their cleanser and then use their makeup remover just on their eyes. That, to me, is wasteful on the, the product. Best thing to do, this, the Alouette cleanser will get all of this off. For what I have on right now, it'll completely clean my face. Um, but if you have a lot more than what I have on now, or you have on waterproof, the Alouette um, Pure Radiance cleanser, amazing, my favorite cleanser of all time. I will put just a little of the makeup remover just down in that cleanser and then really work my eyes or wash my face first, a little makeup remover, and just get the rest of the raccoon off my eyes. But I don't, I never try to remove my mascara with straight up dry makeup remover because it's, it's just all dry and the water and the cleanser really do a good job of breaking it down and separating it. And then the makeup remover doesn't have that much, you don't have that much rubbing and tugging left to do. Just put on a little cotton pad, clean it up little sponge, whatever you want to do. But I've found a squirt of cleanser or squirt of makeup remover, boom. I don't ever have to go back and do anything. And that's just the days that I have on a lot of makeup. So um, I hope you guys got a few tips for your mascara and your eyebrows today. Go get you some plastic spoons. You know, you can see the lashes against the spoon. It really gives you a way to really push those up. If doing what I did today is hard for you, um, and sometimes I even take my finger and literally just go in and hold my lashes when they're good and dry. And that is the best eyelash curler ever in the world. I can't use an eyelash curler. I've ripped my lashes out on two occasions. I don't use them. Some people are very good at it. I'm not, so I don't even go there. So I think that was everything. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Next Monday, I'm going to do a quick video on primers and foundations um, liquid foundations, powder foundations, um, so just a quick little tutorial on, you know, less is more, learning to use less makeup versus more thicker, heavier coverage. So I hope you guys loved it and got a tip or two out of this, and I'll see you for sure next Monday. Thanks. Bye.